Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com and we'll take a look at them after round one. Um, so I want to kind of begin today with a short story. A um, couple years back, time is weird because of the pandemic. I don't actually know when this was anymore. Um, I did some tutoring for um, one of my now regular followers and Discord members, Gary Fox. And Gary recently top forward the Leaving a Legacy open and kind of credited me as one of the people kind of helping give him that push to kind of figure everything out. And so I was very happy when I heard that. I uh, read his tournament report this morning and Hyperlink from my Discord said, hey, to celebrate, I'll donate. Why don't we have Phil play your deck on the channel? And that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, talking about theory briefly for a minute, um, Gary's strategy going into the event was try to be 80% against as much of the field as I can while ignoring the things that I'm pretty unlikely to beat. Um, if you're a follow or follower of Julian and maybe the Everyday Eternal podcast, this is something that he's advocated for many, many times. Like, beat the things that you are going to beat most of the time and, like, get better at beating those popular matchups and ignore the things that you probably can't beat. And that can be a critical way to have, like, good tournament results, like, at the highest, highest level. So today you're going to... I'll actually just start with the sideboard here. You're going to see a very focused sideboard, right? You can see that this deck list clearly has some game one holes against maybe, say, combo or maybe uh, against something like 8-cast, and you can see how targeted this sideboard is for specific things, and notice how there's not a lot of generically flexible cards for assorted matchups. The plan is beat certain things, ignore the rest, and hope the game one deck is objectively powerful enough to do that. So in case you haven't seen Black White Humans before in Legacy, the general strategy is to use scaling threats like Champion of the Parish and Thalia's Lieutenant to either go tall or wide. And what I mean by that is you can either create one creature that's large enough that your opponent can't deal with it, or you can create multiple creatures of a decent size so that a couple of blockers aren't like the end of the world for you. And supporting this, we have some really interesting cards like General Kudro of Draneth, as in from, like, Draneth Magistrate, same thing. Um, it is a human lord, and whenever it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, you can exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. You can also technically sacrifice two humans to destroy target creature with power four or greater. That's not going to come up too much in Legacy, but against something like a Merktide Regent, you absolutely would be willing to sacrifice two humans to take that off the board so it doesn't kill you in two turns. And there's some... Oh, this is interesting art. Um, there's also some um, unique removal spells in here, like Brutal Cathar, which is sort of like an Oblivion Ring type removal spell, uh, and also Night Clubber. So when this ETBs, creatures your opponent's control get negative one, negative one until end of turn. Um, so decks like this have often run some sort of like Orza Pontiff like card in the past. Um, black white versions of dnt maybe we'll splash a plague engineer or something like that just so you can deal with go wide strategies or so you can have a shot at stealing a match from something like elves and we also have adeline resplendent cathar which is another thing that kind of helps with both the go wide and go tall strategy as it makes more creature tokens and gets bigger for each creature that you do have We've got some disruptive elements in the forms of Thalia and Kite Sail Freebooter, as well as just the tiniest, tiniest bit of card advantage. Um, we're looking, generally speaking, to disrupt and kill. We're not the best deck at grinding. We can try, and like we can scale up our threats, so it's not like we have nothing as the game goes long. But physically speaking, we're not going to draw that many extra cards. Um, if you take a look at the mana base here, the mana base is a little bit ambitious. We're, we're not a mono white deck, but like we're primary white, so we can afford these like white utility lands. But a lot of times, since we don't have that many black cards, we will be a little bit reliant on Aether Vial to actually put them into play. 
Note that by playing black-white humans, you are a little bit more resilient versus something like Wasteland or Back to Basics. You do have some basic lands that you can rely on, although you won't see a basic swamp here. Um, this is different than the five-color humans deck list, which is largely just Stone Cold dead because it runs so many rainbow lands uh, to something like a Blood Moon or a Back to Basics or whatever. All right, let's hop into the matches and see how this deck feels. Like, this this deck list got a top four at a uh, large Legacy event recently. It should be pretty good. If you're new here and you like what you see today, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. And remember, if you want to mess around with this deck list or get one of your own decks on the channel, all that information is available in the video description. Let's battle. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. This is a fucking hand, folks. So this gets, ooh. All right, so we're playing against Merfolk. I need this Aethervile to resolve, but uh, if it does resolve, it's gonna look real good for me. I don't wanna get Wastelanded immediately, I don't think. Uh, let's grab a Plains, play this Vial, nice. Okay, so the cool thing about this hand now is on turn two, I get to Vial in Champion of the Parish and then play double Esper Sentinel so that I will have a, um, sort of uncounterable 3-3 three, three that is going to continue to scale up for the rest of the game. Uh, my opponent is at a relatively large advantage for being on the play here. Oh, shit. This is a version with a combo finish. Um, okay, what's the uh, name of the other combo piece? Uh, there's a card that exiles, basically exiles your library. Um, not Parallax Tide. Uh, I, I'm totally blanking on the name of the card. All right, help me out. Help me out in the comments, folks. Mr. Phil is having a brain fart here. All right. Champion of the Parish in. Esper Sentinel in. Let's just always yield to that. And now I'll play Mother of Runes. I want to do it in that order specifically, I believe. Um, the reason being that if my opponent is going to have a Force of Will or a Daze, I would like to draw a card off of that. Okay. Ancient Tomb is spicy. I think I'm going to do a regular old D&T trick. Going ahead and putting in a card in response to my Aether Vial trigger, then ticking this up. Oh, that's not bad at all. All right. So let us play a Kite Sail Freebooter. What is that? Wizard Cycling. Are we straight up wizard tribal? Okay, it is just getting another Thassa's Oracle. So... Oh, <laughs> Okay. Okay, um, so there's a problem here. Height Sail Freebooter definitely lets you take a non-creature card, okay? So, um, in case you're not familiar with this combo, Divining Witch you choose a card name, exile the top six cards of your library, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card with the chosen name. Put that card into your hand and exile all other cards revealed this way. Um, so my opponent will just name a card that's not in their deck and then vial in a Thassa's Oracle to win. They do not have black mana yet to activate this, though. All right, I get nothing. Blow up that Ancient Tomb. Um, I can't really just give pro one color and attack in... With this, actually, I would trade that with either Bob or get rid of a lot of this. I would trade that with Bob if I give Pro Blue. I would trade that with Divining Witch if I give Pro Blue. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get in there. I think every point of damage matters here, and maybe that is better to just give the champion protection. But then I think I just end up in a situation where a chump block happens with a black creature. Um, so this gets some bodies off the field, but I am, I am fucking scared. Yeah, so my opponent will put in the Dark Confidant this turn in an attempt to just get um, the, fuck, there it is, the black mana source. Um, life's bad. Life's real bad. My opponent should not play out the Divining Witch. Ooh. That's good, though. I paid for one. Paid for the other. Alright, so... One top, one bottom, so they liked something that they saw. Um, Gotta really think here. If I were to draw 
Knight Clubber. I would like to have that or Brutal Cathar available at instant speed. Therefore, I think I need to tick Vile up to three here. Fuck yeah, let's fucking go. All right. So I will go to combat. I think I'm fine battling with everything except Mother of Runes. And uh, see where this goes. Yeah, Pawn is going for a chump. That is totally, totally fine. Maybe I should have already drawn with Silent Clearing. Actually, done that pre combat. Yeah, let's assume I should have done that pre combat. All right. So here comes the Divining Witch. And luckily, I did hit a Brutal Cathar. I'll go ahead and take out the Divining Witch until Brutal Cathar leaves the battlefield. Uh, which is never. It is absolutely not going to happen. It does mean that it becomes much riskier to attack with Esper Sentinels. Um, I don't know whether my opponent's deck plays removal of any kind. I'm just not familiar enough with it to know. Got a decent number of basics, so my wastelands aren't exactly going to be fantastic. All right. At this point, go ahead and say always no to Vile. And I can always yield to Vile. Oh, now it's a first strike with Ward. Nice. All right, so you're safe to attack. You're safe to attack. Uh, I think you're still safe to attack as well. I don't think I want to attack with the Esper Sentinels. Because it's just too likely that I either lose them or they're forced to kind of, uh, like, I, I lose a creature to deal one point of damage. I'm not really interested in that. Uh, this isn't actually that much damage. I think that's okay, though. And I figured this was getting chump blocked, which is why I didn't play the Dark Confidant pre-combat. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Malevolent Hermit is fine. <clears throat> Let's see what this Dark Confidant gives me. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Thalia's Lieutenant uncounterably is hot. Um, I think I can go ahead and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's... that's Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have drawn a card, though, before casting that, just to see if that changed things, because um, things might have changed if I drew something with Aether Vial. So, Thassa's Oracle is notoriously difficult to interact with, so I'm not going to be able to do much here. My Kite Sail Freebooters aren't going to be great. Nightclubber kills bobs and witches, so those are fine. Probably going to play Swords to Plowshares. I'm probably going to play Cathar Commando to destroy opposing Aether Vials. I don't think I want to go Kataki levels of deep. And I could play Tomic just to replace a body. It's not crazy. I'll try to do a little research. All right, at a quick Google, I couldn't find a recent list that looks quite like this one. I found an Esper Vial Divining Witch combo. Um, but I'm not sure what list they're basing this on or if this is kind of a homebrew thing. Card that the name I'm forgetting of is taken by Kite Sail Freebooter, which kind of makes me want to leave that in the deck. I don't think my Thalias look super great here, although kind of same thing. Um, I'm going to get rid of Freebooter. I don't know if that's correct. I kind of have to make a decision. Um, I have the right sorts of cards here, but if I don't draw a second mana source, I'm just stone cold dead. Um, this hand is fine, but unexciting. I think I'm just going to throw back General Kudro. I don't have the black mana for him yet. Um, which makes him not particularly attractive right now. Alright, that is a turn one vial again, unfortunately. Um... Kind of the good news here is that I have a respectable amount of interaction of various kinds. I've got a Sword of Plowshares that I can use as a removal spell. I've got Thalia to tax, and I've got an Esper Sentinel that can potentially draw me some cards over the course of this game, although I don't think it's very guaranteed that that actually happens. Alright, uh, I don't actually mind the Thoughtseize too much. 
I don't know what that actually accomplishes. Like, I can still be left with a removal spell either way, and I still have a creature that I can play either way. Like, it's fine in that it, like, gives my opponent the information and allows them to sculpt a game plan. But it's not like I kept a... And that was just completely all in on one aspect. I'm always playing out these lands. Um, I don't think I'm going to try to hold this one as a removal spell. I'm going to go ahead and go for a pre-combat Thalia. And then see if Asper Sentinel actually gets in there. I didn't really see one drops from my opponent last game. It seems like very, very much that they are um, glutted at CMC2. Okay. Bricks is fine. I'm in this awkward situation where I have to decide whether or not I want to Brutal Cathar that card. Another Aganjo. That's pretty good. I attack in with both of these, see what happens. And then make my decisions post-combat about what I do from there. Go ahead and send both of those in. Fine with just getting that out of the way. It costs two mana. And just allows me to be more mana efficient for now. The thing about that as a removal spell is that it is not going to get whatever my opponent vials in at end of turn with an Aether Vial. Because it can only do attacking or blocking creatures. So I think I just kind of take out whatever. Ooh, it's another Dark Confidant. Opponent's at 11. Now I'm at the point where I'd like to see like a General Kudro or something that just like increases my onboard pressure. All right. Opponent's got mana. The Ancient Tomb's definitely a little scary. Ah, yes. The four mana Thoughtseize. A Legacy Classic. Um... Thassa's Oracle being vialed in is kind of a pain. Probably cashing in Silent Clearing this turn. Um, I think I'm just attacking here. And if I lose an Esper Sentinel, like I lose an Esper Sentinel. Yep, that is happening. Every point of damage just matters so much right now. Oh, cool. Um, so my opponent chose to block Thalia. I can go ahead and just bounce Thalia. Technically, I could have waited till after first strike damage, but that doesn't matter here. And since Thali is not a good attacker, I should just play Champion of the Parish this turn. And Thalia next turn. And now I kind of hope that, like, Ancient Tomb Bob and the couple of creatures that I have in play are able to close things out. It does not take much for me to tilt the scales in my favor. It does take something. Ooh, there is a Dark Confidant. There is a Brutal Cathar. So, am I going to Brutal Cathar and take that Thassa's Oracle out of the way? Or I'm going to take that Dark Confidant out of the way? I, I accomplish no damage this turn if I take out Dark Confidant. I think I need to press my current advantage. Alright, Brutal Cathar exiles Thassa's Oracle. I'll scale up my creature. I am fine attacking these things into Bob. I get damage no matter what. Alright, my opponent goes to 3 and has a Dark Confidant in play. This is the defining turn cycle of the game in all likelihood. There's another Dark Confidant. I have 3 lethal attackers incoming. Oh, my, my opponent can take some heavy losses. Yeah, that's fine. So my opponent can take some heavy losses to perhaps survive in this turn cycle. I'm going to try to very specifically draw a Thalia's Lieutenant here. Um, that is a Cathar Commando. That flash is awkward. All right. So let's Legend Rule the Caracas. Play my Thalia to grow the champion. Three lethal threats. Let's see what happens. Opponent can vial in a creature to survive, but it's a lot of chump blocks. The other thing I could have done is just, like, pass the turn here and let my opponent probably die to Bob's, um, which may be better. Okay, Thassa's Oracle is fine. Okay. This is all fine with me. So it may take me a couple of turns to kill my opponent for not just passing the turn there. I think I like passing the turn better. 
Although pass passing the turn would lose to my opponent's two cards being Divining Witch and Thassa's Oracle. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, that's a little less clear-cut than I thought it was. Okay. My opponent has a little bit of time here. And my creature has Flash. Right, this is just going to be Attack with Champion of the Parish. See how my opponent responds. It might try to stack everything in front of this. Yeah, that's fine. And I will cast a Cathar Commando. Throwing this to something with four power, meaning that I kill both of those. And I don't actually lose my creature. Uh, which is fantastic. And now I should win next turn. I'll also blow up this vial on my opponent's upkeep. Or end step if they actually put in something. Okay. Let's blow up... Oh shit, if I blow up the Aether Vial, it doesn't actually change much, right? This just leaves me with three lethal threats. So, my opponent can more or less convert Divining Witch into any card in their deck. More or less, there's a little bit of inconsistency there. So if I blow up this Aether Vial, it's very hard for them to Divining Witch... Oh, they could still play most things. Um, I actually don't think I'm supposed to blow that up. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what weird silver bullets my opponent might have that I have to worry about. Ooh, that ticked up to three. That means that my opponent wants to fish out a card with CMC3. What is that? My opponent has some sort of, like, true name nemesis-esque card. That doesn't do it. Something that gives both of these creatures negative one, negative one would do it. Uh, blow up that vial. My opponent can't play a CMC3 card right now that they draw. My opponent definitely has the advantage of I don't know what's in their deck list right now. Like, I know roughly what their deck looks like, but not exactly. Okay. Oh, I don't have black mana for Dark Confidant right now. That's super awkward. Oh man, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to lose. Wouldn't have had lethal this turn anyway. The thing I need to attack with this is a 5-5, five five, so it can't die in combat. That means bouncing Thalia, replaying Thalia pre-combat, and then crashing in. This is a cool game of Magic. I'm enjoying this one. If I lose, it's probably my fault one way or another. Alright. Thought Lash. Okay. So my opponent can exile the top card of their library to prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to you this turn. So I think I lose to that. So let's cavern on human, play Dark Confidant, throw champion, attack for six. My opponent chumps with Thassa's Oracle. And then I believe my opponent just activates Divining Witch for Thassa's Oracle and exiles the remainder of their library with Thought Lash. Yeah, I think I lose this one. Could have kept my Cathar in play, not destroying the Aether Vial to get around this, but I don't know. Okay, now I can actually look at my opponent's deck list and I'll be able to see the whole damn thing. Okay, yeah, I played around Plague Engineer, actually. Um, normally I would concede here, but it's just like Super important that I take a look at what this deck looks like here. All right. Brazen Borrowers. Brazen Borrower is what? A fairy rogue, so the wizard cycling thing doesn't get that. It just tutors or Thassa's Oracle. Okay. So there's randomly a couple of Baleful Strix. Okay, I guess the easiest way to look at this is Graveyard plus Exile. There's three copies of Baleful Strix, one Plague Engineer, four Dark Confidants, two Thought Lashes, Paradigm Shift. Paradigm Shift is the card that I was trying to think of earlier. There we go. My opponent is heavier on Thought Lash than anything else. Okay. The good news is, I think if my opponent doesn't start with Aether Vial, I run them the fuck over most of the time. I want these freebooters when I'm on the play. 
There's a nice 4-mana enchantment that I now know that I have to take. Not sure if Nightclubber is too narrow, because I can't tutor for it at all. Like, it's kind of nice as something that can have haste to get the final points of damage across the line. And, like, getting rid of Bob's is cool. Drinking a Thassa's Oracle that has blocked, like, a Thalia is cool. I'm just not sure if that's good enough if I need to play these. Adeline is probably not necessary, although nice. The Esper Sentinels haven't been fantastic, although they do have a taxing effect, and they do just come down early for, like, Champion of the Parish and Thalia, so Lieutenant's-based reasons. Um, just looking at how much trouble I'm having finding the cuts here, this probably goes. Um, I mean, I'm very unsure from here. Maybe that I don't want this many freebooters. i can probably cut one general. I can maybe cut one Thalia. It doesn't line up super well versus Thassa's Oracle. There is Esper Sentinel for that matter. Okay. Is this hand fine? I think it is fine. I think I could do better, but I don't think I'm going to mulligan this one to fish. It just has enough tools at its disposal that I'm just down with this. Um, one of the nice things that it does here is that it is just going to get cards out. Th third Aether Vial game in a row. I do get to draw a card this time, though, uh, which is cool. All right, so Cavern goes on human. I am just going to immediately scale up this Esper Sentinel because the tax increases as the size of this thing goes up. That is another Aether Vial. Um, Brutal Cathar is a fine draw for me here. Um, I'll probably want to hold up Sword Supply Shares for the rest of the game after this turn. I don't think I need to do it this turn, though. Um, we're, we're going in. We're going aggro. Um, always yield to that. I don't have an Aether Vial in play, so it doesn't matter too much. If played my land drop. I'll crash in for five. With a Sword to Plowshares held up, and with like a Brutal Cathar to get a potential blocker out of the way, I think I'm good to just aggro through my opponent's double Aether Vial opener here. I could be wrong. I will Brutal Cathar that out of the way in all likelihood. General Kudro. Is my opponent straight up dead? So... General Kudro essentially adds five power to the board, plus one on each one of these, and then one more for this. So that's five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It will leave my opponent at one. I should probably just Brutal Cathar that out of the way and leave up Swords to Plowshares then. Because I will also always just kill next turn, I think. Um, playing General Kudro, though means that I'm protected from Plague Engineer. I value that a lot right now. It's like, yes, that is a one-of, but it is a super relevant one-of right now. Yes, 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 no. And let's hold the swords up for shenanigans. Get my protection from black here. Opponent goes to seven. I very, very, very much have lethal next turn. And I think I've got a lot of the nonsense covered as well between these two and kind of these three cards. All right. Bob finds a lot of gas. Okay. Let's play a Silent Clearing. Let's play an Uncounterable, Thalia's Lieutenant. Exile that card. Scale up these creatures. I do not want to play Swords to Plowshares free combat. Okay, any two of these creatures connecting is lethal. I think as long as I leave back Mom, I have more or less guaranteed lethal. Um, so let's just crash in like this and see what my opponent has to say about it. That is a Plague Engineer. Any... Three of these is still lethal. I do not need to move yet. 
Okay, and my opponent has conceded the game. That was a super interesting round. I think that one's going to be my recommended round for this video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a deck building website for Magic the Gathering, but they do a lot more than that. Uh, in addition to just deck building, you can also use it as a collection tracker, keeping track of what versions of cards you own, their condition, language, and even price, although that can sometimes be a little bit scary. So if you're looking for a website that can kind of do it all at once, please consider checking out Moxfield. They support my content. All right, um, round two, I'm on the draw. I have no colored mana. This is a mulligan. This hand is very strong. Turn one, Vile. Turn two, Esper Sentinel and Thalia. Turn three, Thalia's Lieutenant. Off Vile is really good. I can throw away Asp um. I can throw away Aether Vial with this hand some portion of the time. But I think I'm just going to throw away Kudro. If I don't draw a land, I might have some interesting choices about what land drop to play on my turn. Like, getting a basic in the early game is really nice, so I can't get Wastelanded. But I don't have access to black mana currently. Which is something that I very much might want. Hey, Kudro came back. Let's uh, pretend to look like Death and Taxes and get our Aether, Aether Vial answered by a Prismatic Ending. And we'll go from there. Alright. There's the Vista. Oh snap, it's another snow-covered island. That was unexpected. Ooh, uh, this hand is going to be very aggressive. So... I think I'm interested in the fetch here. Probably just grabbing Scrubland. And tap this. Yes. Put in an Esper Sentinel and attempt to cast Athalia. Kind of feels like I might be playing against like High Tide or Sneak and Show. Okay, yeah, it is Sneak and Show. There is the Omniscience that was pitched. Or, uh, probably not Sneak and Show, uh, probably Show and Tell, rather. So, the good news here is that I have a Caracas. And, ooh, white mana. Sure. File goes up. I can play a three mana card this turn. Probably Adeline this turn. Followed by Kudro next turn. I think I'm into that. Patch. Grab a basic planes. Play Adeline. Cool. Oh, it's whenever you attack. Sure. I will go ahead and attack with my Esper Sentinel, getting another 1-1. One, one. On it has no blocks at this point. I'll activate Ye Old Ether Vial and pump the team. Opponent takes four. I believe this is lethal next turn. Like I haven't mapped it out, but it feels like my opponent's dead. Okay, they're just they're just passing. It's super disconcerting. We'll tick that up. Uh, I am fine casting a Thalia here. I'm not expecting, you know, like, Terminus or anything. All right, um, let's crash in. Get another creature, which uh, this is a bit of a wombo combo. Uh, quick math check, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 14, 15. Uh, yeah, this is lethal, so my opponent needs to uh, move first here. Uh, they didn't. Cool. What's the white for? Like, is my opponent just playing Source of Flashers and Prismatic Endings, or is there something cuter? Monastery Mentor out of the sideboard might be reasonable to expect. Um, probably interested in playing Cathar Commando. It's really hard to stop Omniscience, but there's some times where you can, like, create a trigger by putting in something like a Kite Sail Freebooter or a Thalia's Lieutenant off a of Show and Tell, and then destroy the Omniscience in response to that before they can do something like cast an Emrakul. The other thing I can do is technically play Mind Break Trap in case the opponent just goes like Lotus Petal, Show and Tell... Emrakul or something like that. You can stop that. Mind Break Trap. Uh, technically Exiles, not Counters. I'm not interested in Night Clubber here. 
Mother of Runes isn't exactly fantastic. Do I want to play those Mind Break Traps, which are incredibly clunky in all, but a very niche scenario? I don't really think so. I also don't think I want to board Source of Plowshares. That's hands totally fine. The fact that it can just make my creatures uncounterable is incredibly strong here. Uh, drawing a one drop also quite good. Let the beat down begin. And see how fast my opponent can go. All right, there is a Vista. Would not be overly surprised to see something like a prismatic ending kill this champion of the parish. Yeah, that's fine and expected. So this will almost certainly be freebooter this turn. All right, we'll just do this off the basic. Let's see if we can uh, take a little show and tell here. Okay. I will be taking the show and tell. Drawn from Dreams is uh, very good. Um, so in case you're not familiar with that one, it looks at the top seven, puts two into hand, the rest on the bottom of the library. All right. There's that. No covered island. And I think it's time to play and hold up the Caracas for the majority of the rest of this game. All right. Throw the team. Bash in for two. Opponent can Cunning Wish for some removal spell to remove Kitesail Freebooter and get back their show and tell, uh, which is, I'm guessing, what is about to happen here. Blue-white show and tell is not very common. Ooh. Sure. That's sort of a scary card for my opponent to get. I, well, I guess with Ancient Tomb, they're not that far away from casting that, actually. All right. There is the Drawn from Dreams. So, it can be something that gets rid of a Kitesail Freebooter at my end step and also draws them a card. It probably doesn't actually get to function as a counterspell here. Oh no, that's bad. That gives them that card back immediately, rather than having to use a 6 mana card to do it. That's not where I would like to be. So we're on the beatdown plan, but I don't have quite as much pressure in play as I would like. Brings my opponent to 12. I mean, it's possible I could like top deck something like a General Kudro and really put the hurt on my opponent next turn. Um, but I'm very scared. In leaving my opponent drawn for dreams, I was trying to close out the game before... It became relevant. Double source of plowshares very much changed that. Oh no, are we show and telling right now? Oh no, good, we're not. If I miss on my draw, I'm almost 100% to just cast silent, or sorry, play silent clearing and then just cycle a card. Okay, that did shuffle, which may or may not actually be good news for me. Um, 100% fine with trying to get a better card with Silent Clearing, because I can still play Mother of Runes if I miss. Well, that's a better card, and probably means that I kill next turn. But, uh, much more worried about this turn as of right now. I think I come up just, just short here. Um, we'll see, though. I notably have exactly six permanents in play. I guess I could have had seven if I didn't cycle the land. Still not a lethal attack with this. And I would... Yeah. No, it was probably correct to cycle. Well, if the opponent cracks a fetch, then it would be lethal. Alright. It's going down. Oh, no. So that is just presumably finding triple removal spell? My opponent, okay, yeah, my opponent has played their land, so I think they're on no outs there. Uh, and just like that, we're 2-0. Oh. I'm really unsure about this hand. It has five mana sources, which is not what I want. I'm on the draw, I get one more card out of this, and 
three, really four of these lands have decent utility. I think I just ship this one to find something more aggressive. Um, but I could justify this one as a keep. This is, I think, a much better hand. I think I am least interested in Kudro here in case I get, like, wastelanded and my mana is restricted in some capacity. I'm keeping the second Caracas edging against wasteland rather than keeping the extra thing. Um, it seems like that decision might pay off. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Don't like this. Literally, whatever this is, I don't like it given this hand. I don't have, like, the Thalias and the Kite Sail Freebooters that I very much would need to beat whatever this is. All right, looking like Doomsday or Storm. I'm getting thought seized. Ghost is clear, opponent. I'll lose Dark Confidant here, I think. Okay, I am correct. Mom is a fantastic draw. I'm no longer expecting Wasteland. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play Rubland on turn one. And uh, we'll, we'll be praying to the top deck gods here. Oh? Oh? Blue black show and tell? Blue black show and tell? In which case, Caracas is kind of dope. Anything with the floating mana or. I attempt to play magic. I think I don't play a Caracas yet. I think I play out that planes. In case I end up wanting to put in a Caracas off a of show and tell. I think mom is getting saucy here. I am scared, and I would like to reduce my opponent's life total to zero as quickly as possible. My opponent knows that I have both Caracas and Brutal Cathar in hand. Okay. Got Reanimator going on. There's an Archon of Cruelty. I can answer that with Brutal Cathar. Uh, this is fine for me. Get a Thalia's Lieutenant trigger there. And I can Brutal Cathar away this creature. Mom? I think Mom. Guard Caracas. Do you have a follow-up discard spell or counter spell here? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Cavern, baby! Let's go! Human. Play Brutal Cathar. Uncounterably. Which... Gets rid of Archon, while also pumping the team. And I'll crash in for five. I don't know if my opponent has counter spells or not, but that cavern feels like it was good. Yes. Anything that is, like, spinning the wheels here, I very much like for me. Because I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage on board, which is enough that Ancient Tomb is lethal. And counting this Thalia's Lieutenant that's in my hand, I very much have lethal next turn. Although I guess Brutal Cathar getting removed is a touch awkward, huh? That is very much a thing that could happen in the middle of combat. That makes it a lot less likely to happen. Counterable Thalia, I think. Uncounterable Thalia's Lieutenant. Okay, that is an Entomb. I believe that means my opponent is going to have no outs to this Thalia's Lieutenant. I guess something crazy like a Snuff Out could happen. Okay. Thalia has resolved. I think means we're done here. Power! Unlimited power! Yo, this deck feels good. Alright, yeah, we have gotten the GG. So... We do in going based on vibes here. I feel like my opponent does have show and tell. I also feel like they might have some min mid rangey stuff like a uh, baleful strix or maybe plague engineer. Given that, I'll probably play source of plowshares. I'll probably play leyline of the void. Night clubber's not super exciting here. Most of the rest of my stuff is fine. A little tough to board this many cards. How much do I care about Mother of Runes? Probably not that much. I don't know how much targeted spot removal my opponent is going to have. The answer is probably a little bit. Like Mom protecting Brutal Cathar 
very particularly is cool. Otherwise, it kind of feels like whatever. Also see cutting one Aether Vial after going down five creatures. Or I could, like, cut one Kudro. Kudro, though, like, does technically do Graveyard Shenanigans stuff as well. <clears throat> Which does matter if I have Vial. I get rid of the Adeline. Still leaves me at 28 creatures, which is totally fine. Uh, I don't know about this one. With any one land in two draw steps, this is about as good of a hand as I could possibly have. Accordingly, I'm going to very awkwardly keep this one. Not great versus like the, the show and tell type situations, though. Um, we'll see how this fares. Okay, I mean, that's not the land that I wanted, but it is a land, and I needed a land, so we'll take it. And it has resolved. Alright. No show and tell this turn. Unsure if I would wasteland my opponent or cast Thalia if I don't draw a land. Probably cast Thalia since it grows champion. It's just, like, awkward because I kind of think my opponent has a counterspell right now. They just paused for a little while after Champion of the Parish. Right, opponent didn't fetch immediately, so I don't even get the choice here. Let's play Thalia, see if she sticks. Yeah, there's there's the counterspell that I was expecting. Uh, I attack in for a whopping one point of damage. And we can be looking at show-and-tell nonsense as soon as this turn. I've got a Wasteland target. Okay. Don't mind this. Okay, there's a fetch land after the brainstorm. Okay. Well, it's got something else going on. It, this could just be clearing to cast another cantrip. Right. Target creature enchantment. Okay, yeah. Reasonable. I would love, love, love to draw a black mana source this turn. Kind of like a black mana source. A slow black mana source. 100% casting it. And I think I would like this as a temporary measure to try and stop a show-and-tell from going down. It means I can't cast Thalia's Lieutenant next turn, but, like, a 1-1 Thalia's Lieutenant is not a game-changer right now. Whereas, like, Wasteland might be, and Aether Vial is. Discard spell? Wow. How does it reanimate a champion of the parish as a potential blocker? I mean, I guess gotta play to your outs, right? Um, do I want to play this? Probably. Doesn't exactly feel good, but I think I just need to scale that card up. If my mana looked different, I I wouldn't do this. Uh, this kind of feels like where I'm at. All right, are we chilling? Or are you coming in? You're coming in. Absolutely, I will. I will take that one point of damage. All right, and we're chilling. I am going to go ahead and do the end of turn Aether Vial Bluff. I don't know what all is in my opponent's deck, so might as well make them a little bit anxious. Silent Clearing is gasoline. Very happy with that. I think I start by viling one of these in, because it potentially takes a counter spell from my opponent. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. So I'll take Force of Will with this force one, first one. Rothalia is Lieutenant. I will cast this second one. And then this one. We'll go ahead and take the Show and Tell leaving my opponent with Animate Dead as their final card. And I've got, you know, five onboard power. My opponent's got one chump block in them, and I don't know how much removal they actually have in their deck to take these things out. <laughs> the opponent said, Force seemed like the wrong pick until I realized you had two. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, it's admittedly kind of gross here. All right, there's a land drop from the opponent. It is not super relevant here. 
Aether Vial, I think, is just going to stay at 2 for right now. Um, the reason being that I'm probably going to cycle Silent Clearing in this turn cycle to cast a champion, and I have more 2 drops in my deck than 3 drops. Alright. There's a champion. Throw the Thalia's Lieutenant. Dash in for probably 2 points of damage. Oh, no, opponent is going to take it all. I thought they might chump block and then animate dead it the next turn. Um, but I guess they want to animate. Well, I guess I guess a 1-1 one, one first striker is uh, better than a champion of the parish. Uh, we have gotten the GG. I believe we are now 3-0. Okay, I am playing against a Yorian deck of some kind. My hand is full of gas of various natures. Um, I will be keeping this hand... It's going to be a little tough to sequence, though, because, like, in theory, I want to play Champion of the Parish first, like, so that it scales up, but I also want to play Esper Sentinel first in case it lets me draw cards, and I also want to play Mom first to protect the other things. I believe this is a very difficult turn, is what I'm getting at here. I think I am just going to play a Mother of Runes on turn one, because if my opponent is DNT or some other blue mid rangey deck, this means like, hey, you have to have the removal spell right now, or I'm protected from future removal spells. And I think I'm into that. So that is a quick ponder shuffle. Now, I think in this order, I want to go champion into Esper Sentinel. Let's yield to that. I'm not interested in a Mother of Runes attack at all. I will have. Plenty of power as of next turn. That's fine. I think you're actually supposed to wasteland a ganjo there. But I don't think it matters too much. Ooh, hoo 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 hoo. I'm interested in doing Thalia over my other options here. Alright, Thalia has resolved. This is Four damage in this turn, and a shit ton in next turn. My opponent wastelanded me, so, like, presumably they have more... Nope. Okay. Alright, we're playing against the blue deck. The blue deck with wasteland. Wasteland also potentially means that they have life from the loam. Um, they have life from the loam, they also might have Minsk and Boo. But also a Field of the Dead. Could be the Yorian Green Sun Pile. Regardless, I'm probably not really sideboarding. Like, if we just kind of take a quick skim at the stuff that's going on here. Like, I can play Tomic so that I can't be wastelanded. And so that my opponent can't target things with Life from the Loam. And I can maybe play Source of Plowshares, anticipating some sort of Uro, Ice Fang, Kawaddle stuff of some nature. I want to fetch a snow-covered land. Yeah, snow-covered island. So Ice Fang is somewhat likely to be in the deck. I don't know that I want Tomic. I'm having trouble figuring out what to cut, which probably means I'm in an okay position. I 100% want Swords in case something like Plague Engineer happens. I think I want Night Clubber out. I'm very unsure on that decision, though. And I'm like, I just like legit don't know on my next card, because, like, cards seem good. I get rid of one X1 in anticipation of Plague Engineer being annoying. I can pull one Thalia. I, don't know. I can also just pull one Freebooter. Like, Freebooter is a little bit more awkward if I'm playing against the likes of Endurance. Um, Auto Mulligan, no colored mana sources. Uh, uh, uh. I'm keeping, and I'm gonna die to prismatic ending. But assuming that doesn't happen, the hand is extremely aggressive and has a lot going for it. Uh, I also can just draw a land in two draw steps. Uh, but I, I really don't feel good about this hand. I just don't know that it's worth mulliganing to five. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let's go. Oh shit, here we go. Um, I believe the sequencing here is 
tap this, yes, put in Esper Sentinel, and do Swords to Plowshares now. And if my opponent responds, oh shit, yes, let's go. Yeah, this makes it more likely that my Aether Vial survives too. Oh shit! Everything did not go wrong. This is fantastic. Ooh, Wasteland as well. Am I going full aggro? I don't think I'm going full aggro. I think I'm going to play a Mother of Runes and attack with Esper Sentinel. I am not going to um, put in a Thalia's Lieutenant now. I want to have the flexibility to play Thalia's Lieutenant in response to Plague Engineer specifically. All right, I'm not going to respond in case this is Toxic Deluge instead. I feel so fucking smart right now. Activate. Yes. Thalia's Lieutenant. We'll put plus one, plus one counters on this creature. You may then choose Human to kill my Thalia's Lieutenant, and I am okay with that. I believe I am leaving this at two. I don't hate that. Uh, wasteland your blue source so you can't cantrip. Get punished by life from the loam a turn or two so down the road, but so good if they don't have loam currently. Alright. Game of mutually assured destruction has begun. Ooh. I'm taking up to three this turn now. I just have so many more two drops. I don't know, a lot of my two drops aren't great right now. I'm gonna go ahead and tick up to three and put the Kudro in now. Be building a weird fucking house of cards. Back with Esper Sentinel. You have blocked. I will tap this. Yes. I will play General Kudro. Fuck, I shouldn't have played Silent Clearing out pre combat. Fuck, 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 fuck. I'll take out your wasteland. Um, I am just going to accept this as an exchange here rather than tap mom and potentially get blown out. Oh, uh, I pawn it fucked up. The, like, now I get Bob. I'm super fucking happy about that. Alright, and now I can... I guess take just a land out of their graveyard. I don't think the Plague Engineer comes back under any circumstances. I could be wrong, but... It's unlikely. Alright. What are you looking at, Bob? Another General Kudro. Oh. Not use Aether Vial's ability. Another Dark Confidant. I probably just have to play this pre combat, right? I guess my opponent decides to get cheeky and wasteland me. Alright. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and exile the Plague Engineer. Yeah, yeah. I realize that I am attacking into Endurance, but if I force a block on Endurance this turn. Sorry, if I force a block with Endurance this turn, I don't think it's the end of the world. Like, I, I just have so many resources in play here. I'll go ahead and just give that pro green. I'll take my three points of damage. And if opponent uses a single target removal spell on Mother of Runes so that their removal is open in the future, I still just have double Dark Confidant in play. Okay, no, uh, no removal spells used. Here we go, Bob. Champion of the Parish into Thalia. And a Caracas. Yeah, we're scaling up. Alright. Land drop, which long term means that I can protect a General Kudro very easily. There is a champion. Nuke a random fetch land from the graveyard. Play out the Thalia. Remove another random fetch land from the graveyard. And I think it's pretty likely that my opponent has a second Endurance. But I think I'm good with that. Okay, yeah, they do have a second Endurance. That's okay. Go ahead and pro-green one of these. I lose one Bob for three damage. But these Endurances can't really attack me back, because if they do, I violin Kudro and create a larger creature. That's an Elvish Reclaimer. That's fine. Oh, it's a bird. I'm wrong. All right. 
Bob finds me Adeline. Ooh, and a Brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar is extremely potent here. Gets an Endurance out of the way and makes it so easy for me to kill my opponent. And both of these things just resolve and happen. There's Adeline. Kudro junks a land from my opponent. Champion scales up. Activate Vile. Yes. Put in Brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar away and Endurance. Champion scales up. I have multiple creatures back as blockers. Um, if the two biggest of these are blocked, my opponent takes nine, which is not full on lethal. I guess it's actually ten because, well, no, that doesn't change the math, right? All right, so Adeline gives me a one-one, which grows champion of the parish. All right, and that's good enough for my opponent to concede. Uh, that is a dominating match there, and we are now 4-0, and oh, only having dropped one game in the entire league so far. All right, final round here. Um, this is an incredibly strong but incredibly risky hand. Um, if it works out, it's so good. Playing for a trophy. I don't think I'm willing to risk it on this hand. My opponent is a known doomsday player. Could get forced. And this also doesn't have great disruptive elements versus Doomsday. Let's ship it. <laughs> Wasteland and Prey. I think I will accept Wasteland and Prey on six cards. We'll play a Ganjo out here. Play Mom. And Mom will be getting frisky. Mom has resolved. There was a long ish pause though. Oh, uh, that's a Doomsday Land. That's not a Doomsday Land. Oh shit, it's Delver instead. Ooh, and they get Dragon Rage Channeler value immediately. Um, so let's talk about something real quick. Um, generally speaking, I do not believe that it is correct to Wasteland Blue-Red Delver. I, I think they just recover from it so well in the mid-game uh, with Expressive Iteration that I, I don't really think that's worth attempting. Graveyard's so fucking full already. I think I am going to need to wasteland my opponent because of how afraid of Arctide Regent I am as of turn one. And they are going for the second bobble crack immediately. Gives them more looks at like a uh, force and blue cards for this immediate turn cycle. This does not stop. Merktide Regent from coming down. If I can resolve this card, it stops a Merktide Regent from killing me, though. Merktide Regent does not have Trample. So, let's try to do this. I don't think this is a great play. I do, however, think this is where I'm at with this game, given the resources that I have. I'm going to try to wait for a Cavern of Souls for this Kite Sail Freebooter, or at the very least, like, be playing around days. Ooh, shit. It makes sense to cast Kite Sail. Well, maybe it doesn't make sense to cast Kite Sail Freebooter this turn, actually. If I play Kite Sail Freebooter, my opponent doesn't have to discard a card. So in a very, very, very fucking weird world, I think I'm actually going to cast Thalia's Lieutenant this turn. I'm going to do this off of the Scrubland, which means that I could get Wastelanded off of Kite Sail Freebooter. But it means that I'm not showing Wasteland to my opponent. This gives my opponent another look at a land. And they put a card on top, which I'm going to assume is a land. Um, no attack with Mother of Runes. If I win this game, I'm going to win this game by a landslide, not by inches in all likelihood. Alright. Three more damage. I would really like to get this Kite Sail Freebooter into play. Ah! <laughs> Oh, this is so much fucking damage. I don't like it. Also don't like that I have to keep doing this, but this is how I play around, like, days and a potential Merktide Regent getting dropped into play. Um, so let's do this. Okay. Of these cards, I am most scared of Lightning Bolt by a lot. Alright. One, two, three, four. I know exactly what my opponent's hand is. 
Uh, and the reason why I'm scared of Lightning Bolt is that I need to use Kitesail Free Booter with Pro Red from Mom to stem the bleeding here. Because uh, otherwise, I will die very quickly. Like, I'm still dying relatively quickly, but if that Lightning Bolt just goes and removes one of these creatures, I am very much in the shit. How much does this cost to activate? This costs three to activate. That is convenient. All right. I'm going to do a little cheeky pause here, like I'm thinking about whether or not I'm going to attack. And uh, I'll let my opponent do their thing. Oh, they have found a land. Go ahead and block here. Give row red. Pray my opponent does not have lightning bolt. Double checking my text. Four damage. Take out Dragon Rage Channeler. All right, cool. Have we weathered the storm? Feels like yes. There's a vial. Can't get double dazed or anything, so I'm fine playing a new mom here. Getting the second mom active as quickly as possible matters a lot. Oh, I wonder if my opponent is thinking... Okay, never mind. I was thinking if my opponent was thinking about, like, pyroblasting just to surveil, but then I get wastelanded, which isn't good. All right. Okay, they have a basic island or an end-of-turn brainstorm. Now, I want to throw it out there that I am a turn or two away from expressive iteration undoing all of my early game plays. Like this has been a great game so far with me like jockeying for position well. Um, but if my opponent hits land drops and gets to cast this EI, they will pretty much immediately undo all of the good that I have done for myself in this game thus far. Alright, there is a Delver. That is a second flying threat. That is pretty good for my opponent. It means they can actually start getting in for some points of damage. I am not going to cast that card. I will just file it in, and I will do it now in case I can get some value out of it. Alright. I'm not safe, but I am very much at the point that I can spin this game with a lot of top decks, especially now that I can make my creatures uncounterable. And it's in this weird spot where they like need lands to do things and they also need to flip this Delver. All right, opponent revealed the days that I already knew that they had. All right, so opponent has three damage a turn. I will pro red here. Pro red is just better than pro blue because it stops like post combat lightning bolts as well. All right. File up to two is not what I'm looking for. This is worrying at this stage. We'll put this on human since I have another. For Sentinel can crash in for one. Um, I am worried that I am going to lose. All right. So same lines as last turn. Block here in pro red. All right. Red. The scary world is where my opponent just plays another Delver right here. Okay, this is fine. Uh, champion is not a good draw. I think I leave my Violet too. No shuffle. There's a Volcanic Island. Fuck. Alright, I, I, need, I need a live draw in some capacity here. Go ahead and leave this at who? Yeah, this isn't going to do it. I take six in the air and die. I mean... This is the best deck in the format. What do you what do you want me to say here? So I destroyed two lands. I had a removal spell. I have double protection. I have one invincible blocker. I have a card draw engine. And it does not matter. That is super disappointing. Alright. Leyline in. Removal spell in. Flying body in. Night Clubber is very narrow here. Like, it can be very good if I have a ley line, otherwise it's pretty weak. And, like, how do I want to approach this from here? I don't think I'm interested in Bob. Like, the card advantage is super cool, but it feels to me like a lot of this other stuff is just more important. And, like, the life loss matters. Kudro matters for graveyard nonsense. I don't know what to cut. 
So in no worlds is it Brutal Cathar. In no worlds is it Mom. In no worlds is it my scaling threats. I do not believe my flyers are cuttable. That leaves these. Talia? The Kudros for the late game. Not 100% sure here. I'm going to submit as is. This is a reasonable looking hand that I think is barely worth keeping. I'm not excited about this hand. I just value having a turn 2 removal card for Dragon Rage Channeler so highly here. And I don't specifically want to mulligan two ley line. I want to be happy if I have it in my opener. That's the sort of matchup that I believe this is. Alright. Files resolved. I, in theory, can destroy um, Dragon Rage Channeler. That's just played out immediately. I can do so around days. Ooh, Delver, though. I don't know if I want to remove a Delver. File goes up. I'm just gonna try to do this wasteland plan that I don't really think is good. I think I am. I think I am. Wasteland the Valk. Um, I guess I play around Force of Negation by waiting. And my opponent can't do anything by looking at the top card of their library. Yeah, that is strictly better for me to wait until my uh, opponent's upkeep here. And I'll go ahead and remove that. I don't want to pay the one... I, I don't want to give them potentially more life in order to uh, see what the card they're drawing is. Oh shit, uh, we might get a free one. Yes. So, lands on the battlefield and land cards in graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities your opponent control. So I can play Kite Sail Freebooter, and then Vial in Tomic to stop my silent clearing from getting blown up. That sounds pretty good to me right now. Alright, Freebooter has resolved. Holy shit, is it Staticaster and Meltdown? Multiple Lightning Bolts. Taking one Lightning Bolt doesn't do me a lot of good, right? Yeah, taking one Lightning Bolt doesn't do me a lot of good. Take Meltdown. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. That's my opponent's hand. I mean, here, here's the hoping I just get a free game. Alright, opponent not willing get rid of the land here. I'll go ahead and activate this. I don't expect my opponent to wasteland me in response to play around Tomic, because that's kind of a wild thing to do. Um, I will leave this at 2 until I have a reason to tick up. Mother of Runes is not symmetrical. Let's crash in for 3 here. Put my opponent to 17. I play out Wasteland. Unsure. Very unsure. I'm casting Mother of Runes. I don't know if I want to Wasteland my opponent here. I think I hide that land for a turn. I'll s I, I think it's worth it to cycle Silent Clearing. It takes me off black. But I'm going to assume that that doesn't matter too, too much. The Champion of the Parish. Again, leave this at 2 until I have a reason to tick up. Eh. So this is 3 damage in. Opponent goes to 14. I'll play a Champion. I'll play out the Wasteland. I'm not interested in blowing up Wasteland. I'm much more interested in taking out a Volcanic Island if my opponent draws one. All right, get to go to a game three. Getting all your value here in my trophy match. I get to think about boarding again. Just dodges lightning bolt. I think I'm happy enough with all of this. Not sure that I've objectively boarded correctly, but what I've done feels good. Keep the fuck out of this hand. Hell yeah. Um, this hand has so much going for it. Yeah, so like, I have neutered the power of a Dragon Rage Channeler. It's a 1-1 one, one unless my opponent finds Brazen Borrower. Given that I have double Aether Vial, I am comfortable catching, catching, fetching basic planes here instead of Scrubland. Now, a, a Meltdown can happen, and like, if it does, it does. Um, but this is 
very strong for me in most non-Meltdown worlds. So basically, I care about Meltdown right now, and I care about Brazen Borrower. They found something they liked, and now it just becomes this game of, like, how far can I comfortably lean into Meltdown? Like, I would really like the Esper Sentinel played out on my turn. Take the one point, so that it taxes my opponent on their turn. It just makes me worse versus Meltdown. Fuck! Well, it's very hard for Meltdown not to be good against me now, I guess. I am not willing to play out all three Aether Vials. I'm willing to play out two. Don't think... I don't think I play this right now. It's super awkward. Like, the sooner I play that card out, the better. But I just don't want to lose yet another card to melt down here. I am willing to attempt to trade Asper Sentinel for Dragon Rage Channeler, though. Like, it's not like it's a fast clock, but that selection is very fucking stupid. Alright, what are we working with? Is it Staticaster instead? Okay. So be it. That is obviously very good. Yes. Yes. Um, I am not willing to cast Brutal Cathar unless I 100% know that it resolves. I kind of need to play Kite Sail Freebooter to see if I am going to eat a Meltdown. I don't think I want to cast this at a point where my opponent can Brainstorm. I think that means doing this. Putting this in and getting a read on my opponent's hand. Fuck. Brazen Borrower bounces Leyline. It's a problem in the long term. And I can't take both removal spells here in a meaningful way. Ugh, oh, this is so gross. I hate playing against this deck. Alright, take a bolt. Not really worth doing this here. Past the point where I care about a meltdown, I think the things that are currently in play beat me very handily. So this is something that I wrote about in the article that is available for free on my Patreon, of this deck just being able to play one or two cards and just win most matchups, right? So like, Leyline of the, of the Void is a narrow hate card that I am playing specifically to beat this deck, right? And they have either one or two Brazen Borrowers, and they just have so much card selection that, like, a naked Dragon Rage Channeler that is in play will allow you to consistently find the, the Meltdowns or whatever narrow card you need to get out of any niche situation. So, whereas I have brought in, what, four, four Ley Lines, two Source Supply Shares, like, for things that are, like, directly targeted at this deck. My opponent hasn't really flinched. The is it Staticaster is admittedly not stock. Yeah, so now my opponent has a 3-3 threat, despite, like, my best efforts at stopping that from happening with, like, a dedicated plan to stopping that ahead of time. All right. Lots of vile triggers. So I'm going to be able to play... All of my cards uncounterably for the rest of the game. And while that sounds really cool, it's not actually as cool as it sounds. It's so awkward that Kar like I have a duplicate Caracas there so that I can't use this as a removal spell. Alright. Pass turn. I will play Fog. Activate this. Put in Brutal Cathar. Target that. Wait, does this actually Fog if my opponent removes it now? I don't think so, actually. It forces the use of the Lightning Bolt, which does matter as well. Alright, so... Dragon Rage Channeler will continue to do its thing. By Cathar. And this doesn't actually leave play. My opponent topped whatever card they just drew here. Alright, I'm at 11. Oh cool, it's a Merktide Regent. Oh no, it's, it's Meltdown, sure. Alright. Cool, cool. My 1-1 one, one versus is it Staticaster. Um, my opponent has a 3-3 in play. They have another 3-3 three, three that's available in the air. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm comfortable conceding. 
um, deck is too hard to consistently beat. Overall thoughts on the deck list. Huge thumbs up. Like, deck feels pretty good. I felt like I had relevant decisions at most of the point throughout the game, and I feel like I had good counterplay for most of my rounds. Normally I'd say more, but my food is waiting for me, so I'm going to call it here. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. Have a great rest of the day. See ya!